Linda Foster. I was born in North Yorkshire and loved the countryside there and have followed that love of the countryside there up into the highlands of Scotland. Um, get a lot of my inspiration from the Outer Hebrides and Shetland, Orkney and obviously Ascent and the Flow Country and Sutherland and Westeros. These are the places I feel really connected and that's what I try and show in my paintings. I try not to replicate a view in my paintings, rather evoke a feeling of how it was when I was there and feeling connected with the landscape which just endlessly fascinates me. Watercolour itself um, also fascinates me because it lends its own character to anything you do. It has a bad reputation, I think, in art as being uncontrollable and to some extent that's right. Um, but then you learn to go with it and make it into something that you wish it to be. Um, either that or you throw it away and you've got a drawer full of old paper, which is what I've got in the studio. But that's, hey, that's what it is. I like using different techniques. I'm not a traditional watercolourist. I like any technique I find or make up, I use. Because when I go into the studio to paint, I give myself permission to play. And that's what I do. I just play. Um, or experiment, whichever sounds technically correct. I use watercolour paint, I use watercolour media, I use acrylic ink, any water-based media, I'll give it a go and see how it reacts with each other because you can get some really unique effects with acrylic ink and watercolour and all sorts. And I think the idea today is that I show you some techniques. Um, I've brought some, because watercolour is a difficult thing, I think, to show from start to finish in a limited amount of time. I've brought some examples of things that I've done before, but I'll show you the start of that. And if it dries in time for the video, then, then that's fine. If it doesn't, then you'll have to make do with what I've done before. Okay, well, I'm going to um, show you various techniques that I use in my watercolor painting or water-based media painting um, to give you some idea of, of the variety that um, is available to you but this is a small part of it there is so much that you can do um, so many things you can try but uh, as, I, as I say I've, I've limited it to, a, to five techniques um, the first one is using salt which is a fairly basic thing and I use that to make texture or blobs as I've known in the trade um, um, but that also needs to dry, so once it's dry, you brush the salt off and you're left with, with whatever. Having said that, you can still work into it afterwards if you need to. Uh, uh, it, it, it's reasonably flexible, and I use different types of salt, rock salt, table salt, sea salt, and they all have slightly different variations uh, of, of texture. The other one I'm going to use is what I, I don't know what it's called, but I call it a blowing technique where you have wet paint on your paper and you get a straw and you blow it in the direction you want it. You can just experiment because it's pointless me trying to say to you what you do. You, you'll see how I've used it and then there are different ways of using it. Give it a go is all I'd say. I often use it for windblown trees, which, which are my favourite things in the, in the landscapes. Um, and see how you go with it. Splattering, I think, uh, is a technical term. And that's just find a brush that you like. I mean, some people use an ordinary brush and tap it on their finger and get marks that way. I personally have used a toothbrush, which is quite interesting. You get fine spray with that, or um, a sort of long stencil brush, which is the one you'll see me using uh, in the techniques that I'm going to show you. You can splatter onto dry paper or to wet paper, and you'll get different techniques each time. You'll, you'll get a, a view of it when, when you see it. I also use um, dropping technique where I use alcohol or water, but alcohol is a favourite because it is so um, dramatic, I think. And you'll see me using that. Um, having said that, it's not vodka. It's, it's, I use rubbing alcohol or isopropyl, I think is it's probably its, its technical term. Um, and some of that is about when you drop it onto the paint. When, if you drop it on wet, you'll get a different effect 
to when the paint is damp, when the shine has just gone off the surface, you'll get a very different effect. And the same with the w dropping water on, that, that can give you different techniques too, uh, different results, sorry, um, depending on how damp the paper is when you do it. Um, and I've shown you some techniques, I've shown you some samples, or I will show you some samples of, of both. The final one is one of my favourites, which is cling film, which you can use to, uh, on one colour, say you wanted to, to just put a slight texture on a seascape, or as I tend to use it, uh, making rocks and things like that, where I, I use the cling film, and you'll see me do this, where I'm squirting, or splooshing might be a better technical term, the colour behind the, the cling film and moving it around to get the effect that I want and then you have to leave it to dry for 24 hours, so which is why I've got ones I had prepared earlier. And that's pretty much it, I think. Okay, well, I um, wet the. I've, I've actually stretched, not stretched it, but I've taped it down. I know a lot of people say you should stretch paper, but I haven't the patience or the organising skills to do it. So I've actually taped this down in the hope that I might end up with some sort of a painting at the end of it. So I thought I'd have a go to Sky first. This is Bockingford paper. It's one of my favourite watercolour papers along with Arch and Two Rivers paper. But this I happen to have ready, so we'll do with that. Now I'm going to use a Payne's Grey acrylic ink to start this sky off just because I quite like the drama of it. I normally have things to, to rest on, but I haven't got them here. So we'll see what happens here. It's all a little bit unknown, which is what I like, to be fair. So just faff, faff about, and move the board about, and see what happens. And you've got to remember that most of these colors will dry slightly lighter so if you want something really dramatic, I'm going to squirt some water on here just to ease it, ease it round. And the good old tissue um, kitchen roll to catch the drips. Oops, sorry, that's that paper ruined. And really, when you're happy with how it how it looks, or you can see the potential for something happening, which it, which I can hear. And I'm going to actually leave it flat now and just, just see what happens. I may drop a little bit more in that corner just to add a bit of drama, you understand. This will have to dry for a reasonable length of time because there's quite a lot of water in it. Right, I'm going to show some fairly basic techniques but ones that I have used and do use on occasion. So in order to do that, I'm going to... Um, the first one is salt, so I'm going to do a couple of just colour blocks so that I can show you what happens with salt. Um, having said that, it can change so much depending on how much water, what pigment. So we'll do that colour and another one. Let's use cerulean blue, which is one of my favourites. And and then you just get the salt. Now I usually use um, sea salt, but you can use table salt, any salt at all. Depends on really what you want to end up with. And you just sprinkle it on. And the salt will do its own thing. It will soak up the pigment and leave marks. What I'm going to do on the bottom one is spray some water on it um, because that may make a different texture to the top one because of the water. The thing with this is it has to be left to dry, so all I can say is there it is now. This is, this is um, one I did earlier which may or may not be the same as that because they're always different, but it's using the cerulean blue and the indigo with sea salt. So that's it dry, and that's it with the ink, um, with the salt rubbed off. And you can see the beautiful marks it makes, which I use if I'm doing a beach or rocks or, 
you know, anything in the landscape. This one here is a Daniel Smith black, which is the, the you know, fairly pale background. And then I drop the salt on it. And then I put acrylic ink and a watercolour on it. And that's the kind of effect you get with that. Again, you have to say, give yourself a chance to play and go and just do different things in the studio um, and see what you end up with. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to play with or experiment with is um, what they call a blowing technique, or I, I think that's what it's called. I often use it for some of the windset trees that I use in my landscapes. Um, but this is just a, a kind of a demonstration thing to show you different ways that excite me about watercolour. So all I'm going to do is do some sort of pretend leaves. Um, maybe used a bit, bit too much pigment in that, but we'll just go with it, shall we? Don't have even numbers. Odd numbers are always better. A handy hint. Right, in that I'm going to drop some other colours, just so you can see that watercolour does its own thing. And I often squeeze colour off the brush like that. So that there's plenty of liquid there, and then the watercolour can move around. As it wishes. Which isn't the blowing technique quite yet, but I'm going to put some, um, actually I might put some yellow in there just for devilment. Now as part of this, um, I did a painting sort of similar to this that, that sold over at Glasgow ages ago. And I made some flowers in it by doing the blowing technique, which I'm about to try, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. So, the handy thing for the blowing technique is a straw. Now it's probably overdone the blowing technique, but never mind. And just link them. Again, this will have to dry. Because you can see there's a lot of water on it sitting on the surface. Some people use um, a hairdryer to dry it more quickly. I don't think that's possible because the pigment needs to settle onto the paper rather than be blown around. So it's not it's not very arty, but never mind, you get the idea. Yeah? So right, we're going to try using alcohol now. Um, gin and tonic's fine, but I use rubbing alcohol. Um, 70% which is good it, it actually repels the paint and it's great if you're doing things like um, lichen on stone and things like that it's probably too wet to get a really good effect because it, it does different things So you can see how, to, in my mind, maybe different shapes, that looks like lichen on stone or you could use a different colour and, and that's what would happen. Um, to carry on from the, dropping the alcohol onto paper, what I've done here is I've, I'm just waiting for some of the shine to go off this block of paper and I'm just going to drop water into it because it's just as valid and if you've got a spray bottle you can get quite a good effect from just drips of water off a spray bottle. It's not quite as dramatic as the alcohol, but it does make some fabulous textures around the, around the drips. If that makes any sense. That to me is, is fascinating and usable. Splattering is 
fascinating. I use it a fair amount on beaches and all sorts of trees, leaves and stuff like that. And really it is find a brush that you like. I use what is quite a stiff stencil type brush because uh, I feel I've got more control of it, but it, it really is up to you. And all you do is stick it in some paint, doesn't matter what colour, for this exercise. And you get, ha get it all over your hands and you spray it. Right? I'm doing it on plain paper here. Oh, got a blot already. We'll make something of that. And doing it on plain paper, you can do it on top of colour, on anything at all. Um, and you can do multicolored so that they all do their own thing. The colours all do their own thing. So we'll put a bit of cerulean in there and see what happens. The colours start to do their own their own thing as as the dots blend. Um, they do all sorts. So let's have a bit of red in there just for the hell of it. You can see my palette's getting nice and messy. That's how I like it. You can also do it with other implements, but I I'm not sure doing it onto this sort of paper is going to show it up particularly. We'll give it a go, shall we? So you put some on a, a palette knife, if you can get any on a palette knife, and flick. And it will give you slightly different marks. Depends how, depends what you're after. I often use a palette knife if I'm doing the surf on a, on a wave or, or something like that because because it does splatter. It's better with a slightly thicker paint. You can see it has more direction than, than just using the brush. It's a bit sore on the old finger, I have to say. But that gives you an idea. It gives you an idea just to go into the studio, living room, wherever it is you paint and give it a go. I'm going to put two blocks of, of um, starting blocks of, of colour on here. Just so that we can do some wet splattering and you can see, see what happens. But as I say, any, any different colours will give you different effects um, and that's just watercolour for you. And if you forget to wash the brush properly, you make different colours all the time. This is a more opaque watercolour, this one, which is useful for, for some things. Right. So you can see the difference of the colour going on when, it, when it's wet, how it just dissipates into the background colour. And as it dries, you can, you can build up levels of colour, which is quite useful sometimes, um, but probably not, not possible bit stronger so that might stay more evident as it as it dries and these are only tiny samples really to put them into a painting is is just fascinating and it adds so much to the painting honestly trust me this I've used for beaches before now so I tend to use that and then maybe spray on a few pebbles for the beach and see what happens they'll all start to sort of blur a little bit and as you know on beaches you get different sized pebbles and different coloured pebbles so and it really is about making a different texture rather than just a flat a flat wash or, or whatever and without having to go into lots of detail cling film is one of my favorite things um, you can see plenty of examples of it on YouTube um, and places like that. But I say, have a go. What I normally start with is some sort of background colour. As long as it's damp enough for the cling film to stick to, you'll be fine. That's what I usually start with, because I use it for rocks quite a lot. Um, I haven't got a roll of cling film here, but I've got some I brought with me 
which I'm going to plonk onto here in some sort of fashion and you'll start to see immediately I can move it around I can make shapes marks anything like that and that's how I normally start right because that will dry really well if that's if that's the single color you want to use that will dry really well so what I'm going to put in next I think is is um, an acrylic ink Daler and Rowney cool gray I use a pipette and then for no reason I try and I put it in at the side sometimes and let it flow under the cling film and it sort of creeps through and starts doing its own thing which to me is just I mean it's endlessly fascinating and if it's if it's not coming through to where you want it squish some more in it's uh, it's all possible. And move it around with your finger if it's not doing what you want it to do. See what happens. Or you can do, if it's, if it's because the ink is a bit thick, which it can be sometimes, you know, what I'll do is I'll put some granulation fluid through it. Now my favourite thing to do in, in this because, because of these colours is to put in some liquid watercolour. I'm going to put in um, Burnt Sienna, Dr Martin's Burnt Sienna, just to, I don't know, just give it a bit of an oomph somehow. And I just lift the, lift the cling film up a bit and squish. And see what happens. You can move this around. If you were doing a landscape using cling film, you can actually move it around so that it makes the shapes of the hills or the mountains. Whereas I'm sticking with rocks here. I don't know about that. Let's have a look. Let's put a bit of water in there, a bit of dirty water. But you can see what's happening here and here are all doing different things. Can you see that? There's all sorts happening in there, the interaction of the acrylic ink with the watercolour. Here's, here's, one, here's one that I did earlier and th those are the sort of ideas that I've done and this was going to be just a rock cliff so I would start the landscape up here but often I would do the the cling film as a last thing. I would have done all the basics of the painting first. And there's another one that I prepared earlier, just using two colours, which I quite like. Right, so I'm going to use this um, cling film thing that dried, I did it the other day, and I'm just going to show you the uses of blowing to make, say, a tree, because I, I really like wind-blown trees, and I'm also going to use the pipette to draw with, just so that it does something. Um, and it will be an experiment it won't be a finished piece particularly but it'll give you an idea so i do the main the main trunk and the odd the odd branch and if you're ever in the countryside you just take a note of all these windblown trees because they absolutely fascinate me so now that I've done that and I'm aware that there is quite a lot of liquid on, on that, so I'm going to blow some twigs in. <laughs> and if I think there's not enough, I can drop some more um, ink in and do some more. How about there, we'll put a blob or two there. Actually I'm quite pleased with this shape already.
And I'm going to leave that there because to me that shows a windblown tree. But also I would say I can actually splatter some leaves onto it just for the purposes of this demo and give you some idea. I'll use this fairly opaque titanium thingy. Put some, put some leaves on it. Right, and that does for me. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm okay with that. And I've actually used ink for most of this, so I should be able to put a sky in behind at this point if I need to, but normally I would have done that first. Mm -hmm.